this work will be in the um, in the direct continuation of the work of uh, Xavier Penec on the environment means on knee groups. So the general question is uh, how to perform statistics when the random object is uh, rigid motion. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves uh, is uh, what are the mathematical structures of these sets? And we will see that it's a, it's a Lie group. And once we understood that, then we can think about how the basic statistical tools such as mean and covariance uh, are redefined uh, in order to take into account this Lie group structure. And once we have that, we can move on to our main question, which is how to perform parametric density estimation. <coughs> so first, uh, a rigid motion is a transformation from uh, Rn, which preserves the Euclidean distance. And so this uh, set is noted uh, En, where uh, E stands for Euclidean, and N is the dimension of the space. And when the isometries are direct, we write uh, SEN for uh, spatial Euclidean. So the rigid motion are, uh, I mean, we can easily check that it's a group for composition, because when you compose two uh, isometry, you still get an isometry, and they have an inverse, which are, is also an isometry. And given a uh, rigid motion G, there is a unique orthogonal uh, linear map R and a translation vector T such that uh, we have G of X equal to R of X plus T. And this actually provides a homeomorphism between the set of uh, rigid motions and the product of uh, orthogonal transformation times Rn. And so since uh, this is a homeomorphism, we have the fact that rigid motions are a manifold. And we can also check that the group structure is compatible with the manifold, so it's a Lie group. However, we just have to pay attention to the fact that this homeomorphism between rigid motion and the product uh, ON times RN is not a group isomorphism to the product group OM times RN, but it's a group isomorphism to the uh, se semi-direct product between ON and RN. So we can embed uh, we can embed rigid motion in a matrix group using the following embedding uh, here defined by the by the application phi. So it's an embedding in the uh, n plus one uh, by n plus one invertible matrices, and so this enable us to manipulate uh, the group of rigid motion as a subgroup of a general linear group. So if we look at planar rigid motion, it's a three-dimensional uh, Lie group where we have one dimension corresponding to rotations and two dimensions corresponding to translations. And we will set a reference basis on the, of the tangent space at identity where we have the first vector which is in the direction of pure rotation and the two other vectors which are in the direction of pure translation. And one uh, last thing that we have to point uh, before moving on is that there is no B invariant uh, metric on this group, so we cannot use the Riemannian framework to do statistics. So now that we have, like, uh, now that we understood what are the mathematical structure of, uh, of this set, we can think about how to do statistics. So if we have k point in a vector space, like x1, xk, their mean and covariance is simply defined as uh, either the, their sum over k or the sum of these uh, of these tensor products over k. And we can see that it uh, completely relies on the vector structure. And so now if we have an arbitrary Lie group G, uh, I mean, on a, on a Lie group, the, the, the group law is not always commutative, so it is clear that this definition cannot be uh, generalized in a straightforward way. So now if we take k points uh, g1, gk on the group, the a standard approach is to um, linearize the group from a reference point g. And if the vectorial mean in this linearized space turned out to be zero, then we will say that this reference point g is a group mean of the, the set of points g1, gk. And then the covariance is also defined as the vectorial covariance in this linearized space at the mean. So the challenge here is 
how do we find a linearization procedure such that the resulting mean and covariance are going to commute with the group uh, multiplication? So uh, the linearization at identity is going to be performed with the exponential map. So on a Lie group, we can define straight lines going through identity as morphisms between uh, R with the plus law and the group. And uh, so these, we, we would like to linearize the space, so we would like to turn these group straight lines into, into vectorial lines. So how do we do that? We, we will identify a group straight line with the vectorial line generated by its tangent vector at identity. And this is actually what the exponential map does, just the other way around. So it takes in input a tangent vector and maps it to the group on the corresponding uh, straight line. And when we have a matrix group, this exponential map is uh, simply the, the matrix exp exponential. So this map is uh, only injective on, on a domain around zero in the tangent space at identity. And on this domain, on such a domain, we can uh, define the inverse map and we call it the logarithm. So if we look at what happens on planar rigid motion, so uh, we can express the exponential map in our reference basis and we obtain this simple expression like, which is um, obtained using like the, the matrix exponential. And since we have a reference basis of the tangent space at identity, it is uh, uh, identified with R3. And under this identification, the exponential is going to be injective on the set minus pi pi times R2, where we have to open the set on, on one side of the interval. And on that, on that set, we define the, the logarithm uh, to be the inverse map. And there is also an explicit expression, which I just didn't write on that slide. So now we know how to, how to linearize the space uh, from identity, but we also uh, would like to be able to linearize it uh, from any point, from any element of the group. So the straight lines going through identity, they can be translated to any arbitrary element G of the group using left or right multiplication by G. So if we choose a site for multiplication, then we'll have a way to linearize the space uh, everywhere on the, on the group. And fortunately for us, the resulting identification between the tangent space at G and the group is not going to depend whether we chose to translate the exponential map with the left multiplication by G or right multiplication by G. And this is a central ingredient in, in all the B invariant statistics and new groups. So we, we do actually have now a natural way to linearize the space from any, uh, from any element J, and we simply call it the exponential map at J. So now that we have this linearization procedure, we, we can go back to the, to the actual definition of mean and covariance. So if we have a, a set of point J1, JK on the, on the group, then uh, a point G bar is called a mean of G1, GK if the, the sum of the linearized point from G bar is zero. So we're here, we, we have defined the linearization with the logarithm at G bar. So due to the independence, uh, to the choice of left or right multiplication in the definition of the exponential and logarithm at J, we have that uh, this definition of the mean is going to commute with left and right multiplication by arbitrary elements. And so once we have that, we simply define the, the covariance as the vectorial covariance of the linearized point, and for the same reason, is going also to commute with the action of uh, like left and right multiplication by every other element. So now we we defined uh, like basic statistical tools such as means and covariance, and uh, we can move on to density to parametric density estimation. So we would like to estimate the density. So, so one of, of the first question we need to ask ourselves is uh, density with respect to, to what? So on a planar rigid motion, there, is, there are uh, B-invariant uh, measures which are unique up to a scaling factor. 
So we're going to compute our densities with respect to such a measure. And we're actually going to choose the, the measure mu such that, uh, such that our reference basis is going to be a unit parallelogram. And when we do this, uh, if we translate uh, this uh, parallelogram using left or right multiplication to any other point of the group, it's going to remain a unit parallelogram because our reference measure is being variant. So if we have uh, now a random variable taking values in SC2 with density f, the, the probability of an event is simply of an event a is simply given by the integral over a of the density with respect to our reference measure. And our goal is to estimate the density f given a set of uh, IID sample and using a parametric estimator. So to do parametric uh, density estimation, we, we would like to define, or we need to define the, a statistical model. And uh, a statistical model, also we would like the, the densities of the statistical model to be parameterized by their mean and covariance. So, so the densities should verify these uh, following properties. So the first one is just a normalization condition in order to have a probability density. The second one is to ensure that the, the mean of the density f g sigma is uh, actually the element g and that the covariance of the, of the distribution of, of the density f g sigma is, uh, is sigma. And we also would like to have a model where all the, density, uh, all the densities have uh, explicit expressions. So how can we do that? Um, a possible approach to at least have densities which integrates to one is to take uh, an arbitrary density on the group, a density which has a finite integral, and then we simply divide the density by the integral over the group and, and we obtain a probability density. The problem when we do this is that usually we don't have an explicit expression of this normalization constant. And even in maybe rare cases where we do have an expression for this constant, then it's still very difficult to control the mean and the covariance while keeping uh, express explicit expression for everything. So what we will do instead is that we will put a uh, distribution on the tangent space, which is easy because the tangent space is a vector space. And then we will uh, push this distribution to the group using the exponential map. And if we're able to compute the Jacobian of this exponential map, then we're going to uh, be able to have explicit expression of our density with respect to the reference measure of the group. So on manifolds with uh, arbitrary connections, uh, this kind of uh, Jacobian determinant, they, they follow differential equations along geodesics, and they usually don't have an explicit expression. So fortunately on a Lie group, the connection is not arbitrary at all, and the situation is uh, simpler. So for instance, if we go back to the case of uh, planar rigid motion, uh, we can directly compute this uh, Jacobian in, uh, in our field of uh, reference basis, mm -hmm. and we obtain the simple formula here. So now let's uh, actually build the, the densities. So for this, we're going to, to choose a function k from r plus to r plus, whose support is uh, included in the interval 0, 1. And we would like the function k to verify these two conditions in order to ensure that uh, k of norm of x is going to be a probability distribution on R3 whose covariance is the uh, identity matrix. And now uh, we will define uh, our density fg sigma on the group as the push forward by the exponential at j of the following density defined in the tangent space at g. So we need to ensure that the support of the distribution in the tangent space is included in the injectivity domain of the, of the exponential map at j. And this leads to a constraint on the covariance. And, but if, if this constraint is, uh, is respected, then our uh, density fg sigma becomes, uh, uh, is a probability density and its expression is uh, the following. 
So now, um, if the covariance sigma is small enough, then we are sure that uh, G is actually the only uh, group mean of our uh, density G sigma. And then we have the desired property that G and sigma are the, the mean and covariance of, uh, of the density G sigma. So we have the B invariant of all the ingredients which are used to build uh, our model. So we have B invariance of the mean, of the covariance, and uh, of the Jacobian. So I might have uh, forgotten to mention that this Jacobian that we obtain here is also B invariant uh, due to the B invariant of the reference measure. Um, so from this, it uh, directly leads to the fact that our statistical model M is B invariant in the sense that if we take a density in that model and if we uh, take the left or right action of any element on that density, then it's going to remain in, in, in the model. So now we have defined our B invariant model. We, we need to, to define a, a statistical estimator. So this model was designed in, in such a way that uh, the moment matching estimator is very simple to use. So if we have k points j1, jk on the, on the group, we're simply going to compute the empirical mean and empirical, of co empirical covariance. And then we're going to choose the density in our model M, which has the same moments. So unfortunately, the maximum likelihood density, uh, maximum likelihood estimator usually, I mean, does not have uh, an explicit expression. And if you want to use it, it's going to require a gradient descent. So one question that remains to be studied is how to estimate parameters in a, in a mixture model. And uh, a significant difference with the vectorial case is that, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have constraints on the covariance due to the injectivity radius. So to conclude, we, we have now uh, a B invariant uh, statistical model together with a, with a simple B invariant estimator, which did not seem to, to exist in the, in the literature. And this uh, initial work uh, leads to, like, uh, uh, opens to, to several perspectives. Like a first one would simply be to study the convergence of the, of the moment matching estimator. A second one would be to, to propose some algorithm to estimate parameters in a mixture model. And finally, also we can try to generali generalize this approach to uh, possibly arbitrary Lie groups and we have reasons to believe that it might be possible possible because uh, the jacobian should have explicit expressions and one of the one of the difficulty actually would be to to find a way to properly define the log map on the arbitrary group thank you very much <laughs>